So in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and create our first script. But I like to keep everything organized. So before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we're in our assets folder. Right click and I'm going to create a new folder called scripts. As your projects get larger, it's very important to keep everything down here organized. So I'm going to go ahead, double click inside of scripts and I'm going to create another asset. But this time I'm going to go ahead and create a C sharp script. And I'm going to call this evil QB. Now it's important to note that you don't want any spaces in here as the file name is actually what's going to be generated for the class name. And in C sharp, you can't have any spaces in the class names. And it loads up into model develop, which is the default for unity. Now, if you if you find the text too small, you can hold down alt and use your scroll wheel on your mouse to make it bigger or smaller, smaller. All right. So here's the name of the file. It's also what's known as the class name. Now we're not going to go over too much of what's here. This is our first exposure to a script. Let's just get familiar with working around in the script and then we'll go ahead and come back and dissect it. So the first thing I usually do is just get rid of everything in there. I like to start off with a brand new fresh script. And I'm going to quickly hop back into Unity just so we can take a look here at our evil QB. Now we've gone over that these are game objects and of course game objects are made up of components. And in order to make our Q evil QB roam around on this map, we're going to want to go ahead and get a reference to the nav mess agent so we can communicate with it and control it. And we can do that in C sharp by simply doing public and then the name of the component we want. So nav mesh agent. And I'm just going to call mine agent. And make sure you end it with a semicolon and I'm going to hit command S to save it. You could also come up to the file menu and click save. I've already done it. So it's saved automatically. And let's go over this line that we just typed just for a minute here. So the nav mesh agent, that's the component we want. Agent is just what we're going to name it. So we're going to refer to this nav mesh agent. We're just going to call it agent for our code. And this public part allows it to be accessed inside the inspector. So now if we go ahead with our evil QB selected, we can add our component that we've just created our evil QB component. We can either drag and drop it. That'll add it right here. I'm going to click on the little gear to remove it. Another way we could do it is click on the add component then start typing in the name of the component we just made evil QB. Another way you could do it is drag and try to drop it on here. I don't like this way as your scene starts getting more and more complex, especially if you start getting a lot of child objects, you can never really predict exactly where that script's going to land and it can be a hassle trying to track it down later. Normally I just select to select the object in the hierarchy here and just drag and drop it over. But anyway, so now that we've done this, we see that we have a spot here called agent and nothing is assigned and it's looking for a nav mesh agent. We can go ahead and just click himself and drag it in. And you can also search for it again. He's the only one there in this scene. And I think I can do a none, right? Yeah, we'll get rid of it. And I believe we can actually drag the component itself in now as well. There we go. So there's three different ways to do it. And of course, now that I've got it populated, I'm going to go ahead and hit save for my scene. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to call a method called update. So void update. Now this method here is called every frame. So every time your game is running, every frame that it's run, whatever we put in between these two parentheses is going to be called over and over again. And what I'm going to do is do agent dot set destination and if we take a look here it takes a vector three so we need a position and we'll get this position in just a second here so i'm going to save that off and just quickly go over it so this agent remember we said we're going to call this nav mesh agent we're calling him agent and we're going to tell him to set his destination but we have to figure out exactly where we want him to go and there's an easy way to do this inside of Unity. I'm going to go ahead and take our FPS controller. And we see this little tag up here. I'm going to go ahead and set that to player. And what this does is it actually goes ahead and tags our FPS controller as player. And we can go ahead and code and search for 
anything tagged player. Now, since we only have one, when it goes out and searches for it, it's just going to find the one. If we had multiple ones, we could actually go out and find all of the game objects tagged with player. But in this instance, I only want one. And all the ones that are there right now come with the Unity project by default. If you've downloaded a few assets, there might be one or two more in here. Uh, if the asset package you downloaded had a couple in it, that's not too bad. But I'm also going to go ahead and tag the evil QB. And I'm going to tag him as enemy, but we don't have it. But that's okay, because we can go ahead and create our own tag. So we'll go ahead, list empties. So we'll just say enemy. Now spelling does matter. For tags, I tend to do capitalization. So if we select evil QB again, I'm going to go ahead and select enemy. And of course, later on, I can select enemy if we make more of them. Uh, but that's it for the tagging for now. I just want to tag this as evil QB and have my FPS controller tagged as player. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save, come back into mono develop. And now I want to be able to find the player and I'm going to go ahead and store the players. Well, I'm going to go ahead and run to that player's position. So I'm going to go ahead and say public. This time I'm going to look for the component transform. And I'm going to call it target. And we're going to come back down to here. Now we're going to say target dot position, which returns that vector three force. So now when we run this line of code here, it's going to go ahead and say, hey, agent, go ahead and set your destination to whatever our target's position is. So I'll go ahead and save this off. Don't worry if it's not too clear. I'm assuming you have at least some knowledge of object-oriented programming as this class is made for the high school class I'm teaching, and they've had Java 1 as a minimum. If more programming instruction is needed for the online section part, that's fine. I can go ahead and make another series for that, but that will be separate. So let's go ahead. We're going to select our evil QB now, and now it's asking for a target. So I'm going to go ahead and take our FPS controller and drag it in there. I'm going to go ahead, hit save. And I want to check down here to make sure there's no errors. There could be typos. And if there is, you can go ahead and click it and it's going to open up a console. Let me just reorganize these. I usually have them in a special order. And I always dock my console down here. Once you start coding, you're going to get, you're going to get typos. It's just a fact of life. And it helps you sort through them. Let me go ahead and actually make a typo. So you'll see what it looks like. Uh, let's just spell position wrong. Of course, you see it's also pink here with the skin that I'm using, or the theme. But as you see here, we have an error. And it's saying that it does not contain a definition for persicio. So it's pretty obvious the typo. You can double click it. It'll bring you to the line that has the error. And, well, it's not necessarily the line that has the error. It's, it's where the, the compiler found the error. It could be the line above it. It could be the call before it. But in this case, we've got the pink. It's pretty obvious that's where the air is. We'll go ahead, put the end back in, save it back off. And we noticed that even though we had one typo, we had three error messages. So you could end up with like a thousand error messages. It's just because of one typo. But we'll get more into detail on scripting a little bit later on. Let's go ahead, we'll save this. I wanna make sure that my game view is not maximized. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And when the game starts, see our little cube? Well, oh, get that off. If we were to go ahead and follow him, which is FF for focus follow, at least that's how I remember it. And we can go ahead and start running around in our game. And he will follow us. Run. And of course he knows the path that he can travel simply because of the navigation mesh. He can run on blue. So let's do a quick jump over here. Now we're not bound to that navigation mesh. We're using, uh, all of our control is built on the, the, the FPS character controller script. So see how he has to go around? He cannot get there. And it's looking at the edges. To be honest, that magenta color that's showing up, that's new. I'm not sure what that's about. But anyway, well look, we have the arrow and everything else. The nav oh, I think it's because this is the first time I've ever run it with the navigation mesh tab open. That's actually pretty cool. It is. 
All right, but there we go. We've gone ahead. We've written our first script. Very simple. Only three lines of code, really. But in the next one, let's go ahead and start taking a look at what's called prefabs.